As much as Alphalete has grown over the last eight years, we broke $100 million in revenue. We had over 27 million people on our website last year and everything is just continually like climbing up and up and up. And all that should bring me excitement and fulfillment and just, but the truth is like, my heart's just not there. And it's honestly, it's very clear to me now what actually excites me and where my passion truly lies. Naturally lit check-in. So setting camera up, front facing camera. Um, I'm gonna angle it down ever so slightly, you know? And then I'm gonna add the photos. Choose photo or video. One, two, three, add. And then you guys gotta like backspace that. Now you're should here. I like my front pose first. And the back pose lat or yeah, the middle. I think it's fine. I can kind of see. Look at that, all of a sudden, just like we started prep, you got consistent data photos. The more data that you can take in, the more you can learn about yourself and track, and like notably track, the easier prep is gonna be because it's less stress. You ha you know, based off of like a fact and what your body's doing, you, you can know how to advise and make changes, right? For the future, so photos are done. Uh, I'm gonna send Alex a screenshot of a note right here, just like kinda screen in three, two, one. Gonna show you guys exactly how I track my breakfast for today. So first, uh, I like the MyFitnessPal app and I do have like the membership. I think it's like, really expensive now, honestly. So like MacroFactors is another good one, MyFitnessPal. Uh, there's like a few good tracking apps, but as long as you track, pick your app, all good, okay? So Diary, I actually inputted my uh, macros at the top. You see I have 420 carb, 80 fat, 225 protein. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add my food like this. I'm gonna do uh, my egg beaters. And so the nice thing, I kinda have like a history log so it has all my recently used stuff. So I'm just putting my do not disturb on, so you don't see on my sheet. 
uh, we're gonna go four servings there. And when I do the egg beaters and measure anything that I'm like pouring, you know, out of, I put the item on my food scale, be sure the cap is like off, and then you go ahead and turn it on and tear it so it's a zero, and you just go negative. So like the, the negative number will equal one serving on the back. So I did negative 184 grams for that one. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and do two whole eggs. So whole egg, boom, we did two of those guys. Then we did the uh, swirl bread, so good. That's like a, that's like a treat that uh, I'm not gonna have for much longer. It's like 63 grams of carbs for three slices. Uh, what the heck? The label says something different than the MyFitnessPal, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with MyFitness, okay? <laughs> What's seven grams? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is, next we have uh, berries. So I got my fruit. What I like to do with the fruit is I do 100 grams of raspberry and blueberry, but always type in USDA before like that. And then blueberries, we got 100 grams as a serving size. So you can change this to be like, uh, you know, you could do it by grams or you could do it by, you could do like one gram and then say 100. That works, it's kind of easy to be honest with you that. And then if we do USDA, oops, USDA. Uh, blackberries this again you can if it's 100 grams you just go one serving so it's two ways to kind of do it like that boom and next we just have the sugar-free jam we did two servings of that and literally that is how you track so if meal number one you got 89.6 or 90 grams of carbs 17 grams of fat 46 grams of a protein very well balanced meal and at the top where it says nutrients remaining you have the leftover macros for the day um so honestly guys like i, I like my fitness pal a huge advocate i know it's expensive i'm not gonna say go buy it or but if you can afford it go buy it this makes your day just easier if something makes your day more efficient easier so you don't have to worry about it don't have to like do any math or don't have to think about it like, more than needed then worth the damn investment because your time is worth your investment and peace of mind okay so yeah, there's that. I'm gonna start recording because I gotta go in a few minutes. So, that was a lot of food. It takes me a while to eat. Fuck. It's like a It's been a time. <laughs> Always happens. Like, but the deeper you get into prep, and right now I'm like not even hungry, honestly, like, at all. Obviously, the deeper you get, the, and the longer you're dieting, the more you enjoy those moments. But right now I'm just like, yo, just put it in real quick. Like, Wait, oh, God. oh my God, oh my God, we're gonna leave. <laughs> Everything that we have on the summer shredding. Uh, okay. For the lunch. Should we open them up and kind of take a look? Yeah. Uh, white. Fluffy white rice, new potatoes. Those are yummy. Smash um, sweet potatoes. Smash burger, you're gonna say smash burger. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 96.4 ground beef, that is um, seasoned really good. We have barbecue chicken and lemon pepper chicken, asparagus with a little bit of lemon pepper, crunchy, bell peppers, um, roasted broccoli and roasted Brussels sprouts. And none of the food has like, you know, we're not using olive oil, we're not using any, like nothing. nothing. For like the, mom knows. For the ground <laughs> beef, I just put a little bit of water in all the seasoning um, and so it's super clean. Everything's super clean, but it's not dry because she knows how to cook it, right, you know? And then even like the barbecue chicken, we use the uh, the Sweet Baby sugar Ray's sugar-free. Sugar-free barbecue sauce, yes. Uh -huh. And lemon pepper is just clean. Lemon pepper. I'm a director, chocolate producer. We come to the production company with a story, and then that production company brings on the streamer, and we kind of get a green light based off of like that. Got it, got and so it. we both have various projects across every streamer, like HBO, Amazon, Netflix, and got like it. all these things. It's really just fascinating, like everything that you're doing. So I think that um, yeah, we just wanted to kind of like hear more about like what your vision was for Alphaland and like what 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 the community is like, and just kind of you know, to someone who like like knows nothing about it, mm -hmm. like what would you how would you like describe it? So essentially, like just a little bit of back story from you know the Alphaland. This we just opened January first, twenty twenty two, and when. I started my first gym in 2014, uh, completely fit. It was 900 square feet, 
completely failed. I thought I could do it on my own and just, you know, have a place to film and get my friends to come and sign up and no one's cards went through, blah, blah. It was just, didn't want to call them and say, you know, all that kind of stuff. So shut that gym down, but I continued with the YouTube videos and I kind of finally had a space to not get kicked out of, you know, at every, literally every local gym within like a 20 mile radius here in Chicken Houston, not allowed. <laughs> you know, the cool thing about the gym is it is, in my opinion, the best equipped facility in the world. I never, I always wanted to build a place where there wouldn't be one piece of equipment that I would miss for this other place or there, you know, oh, they, this gym had that field or this like, you know, this uh, really cool thing that like, I just want to bring it here. But logically, it's just on paper, like it's we got everything you need, you know? Mm -hmm. Living in a crowded dream, such a for the quiet that you need to breathe Gave up on your sanity to hide behind your shadow While you tried to take the sun down Hearts will never change All right, today was a busy ass day. Man, crazy day. Um, back to back to back, but got a lot of really important, just like important things done. Um, it was, it's crazy. I'm gonna go and talk later. Right now, all that matters is not work, not with that. No, it's workout. Today's back, bicep, and a little shoulders, uh, side delts. I'm gonna do the workout that I've been doing for like the last six to seven months consistently, been getting really strong at my specific movements. You're gonna see what all that is here in a few seconds, but I'm gonna put the workout on the screen. So screenshot the workout, try it out. Uh, and this has been like my, my go-to over this entire off season. So um, yeah, on the screen right now, screenshot. I'm gonna use some tips during the workout, and I got my pre-workout, which I ain't gonna talk about, but you can, you know, you can use, use code CG if you want. <laughs> Boom, ghost, and let's go. What's going on guys, Christian Music Mile with Christian Music Mile Fitness. We are back with another commentary. Today is March 30th, 2023, and we are 20 days into prep. I wanna to talk to you guys about my workout today. This is a pretty standard pool day for me. Uh, a lot of times you'll have people do say just a back day where they'll only do one muscle for the day. They'll do back or they'll do chest or they'll do shoulders. I'm a bigger fan of incorporating at least two to three muscle groups per day and doing lower, um, like numbers of exercise. Never really do more than six, potentially seven movements for the day. Um, but I really prefer this method with a higher frequency. So I'll be training a muscle group more times during the week. Uh, with less volume, so less sets. And I'm just gonna give you some quick tips on these movements. So number one, we started out, out with a seal row. This has been my go-to back row movement for the last six to eight months. I do it at the beginning of every single back day. And today I'm uh, using 200, or not 225, but two plates on each side and really just trying to keep my neck neutral. That's the main cue. I'm trying to bring my elbows as far back as possible. And I'm trying to, I feel like you really have to keep your core extremely, extremely tight when you're doing these. Um, but really just focus on driving elbows up, keeping chest up, even though I'm on a flat bench and keeping my neck neutral and squeezing the back as hard as I can. So that's number one. The second movement, we moved on to a, my favorite shoulder movement, the kettlebell lateral raise. Now I've been very, very conscious, or I am very conscious that, you know, my shoulders and my, or my traps have are tending to take over and like help a lot of my shoulders. And that's not what you want. You want to be sure that your traps are as relaxed as possible. And you're literally just using your delts to pick up the weight. So really trying to constantly just work on my form and every single set, every single rep, as annoying as it is to tell yourself, I'm just reminding myself like, all right, relax the damn traps. And if I, if I notice I'm kind of shrugged up, you know, mid set, I'll reset, bring my shoulders down and, you know, restart that kind of that or the that rep, you know and just try to keep the tension on as much as possible so i'm not letting the kettlebells like come all the way down to where i'm losing the the tension i'm at a difficult starting point next we have a body weight pull up man these things i don't care how how advanced you think you are a good set of pull-ups is gonna kick your ass for me uh i'll go to I, honestly i go one rep shy of failure on the first set uh, and really just kind of continue. I, I don't mind hitting failure once I've done at least one or two, like just keeping a little bit left in the tank, but here I'm just really focused on bringing my chest up to the bar. So, and also not losing 
the the tightness in my scapula. So I want to keep everything retracted. I want to be sure that when I'm coming all the way down on the pull-up, I'm not like letting myself just hang freely. I have the tension on, I have my thumbs and my, I have like a hook grip over the bar and I'm really just driving, again, driving my elbows back and bringing my chest up uh, and keeping the tension on the lat. Next, we moved on to a seated cable row. Now on here, my biggest tip, honestly, is to take your time with the setup. Don't like try to grab the bar and just you know swing back. I like to really, really get my feet planted onto the machine. Uh, and when I grab the cable, I almost like get my back straight and I like to lean back like slowly. And like, it's almost like I get into the first rep extremely slowly. I'm very, very tight. And I kind of lean forward and then I get my momentum one two and so it's a really controlled style of approaching a set um i'm definitely like a, the type of lifter where i'll if you can't control the weight very 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 well especially on your first rep before you get into like your groove you shouldn't be using that weight um so i like to obviously use a good weight to keep very very tight and i like to pull low so i'm keeping my elbows tucked in by my lats i'm pulling the bar towards my belly button i'm not pulling it up towards my chest i'm not shrugging up and just flaring my elbows i'm keeping everything as tight and as low as i can i'm pulling that cable like directly in line with my belly button and that is that tip my next movement i did we're going to touch a little bit of biceps my favorite bicep movement of all time the zodomen curl now what this is is a combo of a dumbbell curl right and a hammer curl so you're going to do both arms at the same time Okay, so we're not alternating both arms at the same time. You're starting in a um, like a neutral grip at the bottom, right? So your thumb, like your hands are face, your palms are facing uh, towards your legs. Your thumb is facing forward, and as you're coming up with both arms at the same time, you're rotating just like you're doing an alternating dumbbell curl. But you want to really focus on bringing your pinky outwards. So you're twisting the pinky out and getting the the maximum stretch and contraction that you possibly can out of your biceps so that's what happens when you twist outwards right you're going out you're twisting you're squeezing now on your way down with the rep you want to once you squeeze start rotating back to a neutral grip and slowly going down in a hammer curl position so in that neutral position so again you start with the neutral position start curling up and rotating 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 pinky out pinky out pinky out squeeze rotate and then you start going down you're flexing the tricep at the bottom and that's your cue to do the next rep. Um, and so this is really like three sets of 12 with the same weight uh, on every single set with good form, with a good tempo. Um, to wrap this up, we did a second lateral movement. We did a hammer strength machine. Uh, again, just trying to keep the traps relaxed, bringing the pulling up with the elbows. Uh, I always say like pr pretend you're Pinocchio, right? You have strings attached to your elbows and literally you have a puppet master like lifting up, you want to lift up with the elbow and minimize trap involvement. Finally, doing a uh, on the cable, kind of like a hammer curl cable variation where I'm just using the V bar uh, here, just being sure I am putting my arms forward. So I'm locking in my elbows by my sides, bringing my arms forward. And as I'm coming up, I am keeping that forward position, um, like keeping my arms locked in the entire time. I'm not letting anything move um, and I'm just getting a full stretch. Uh, when I'm contracted, full extension with my tricep flex, and that is the workout, guys. So I hope you enjoyed, and enjoy the rest of the video. All right, guys, this is Juan. What's up, guys? Okay, Juan's been filming, helped me a lot, uh, just like getting videos up on this YouTube thing. And I got something to show y'all, and uh, I don't know, how, I don't know how I feel about it, but I made this decision, and <laughs> I'm just gonna go with it and show y'all. So we're here in the private gym. Just finished up a pool day. Oh, go ahead, Juan. You walk first, bro. He has no, he has no idea what I'm this going. thing is. Over there? Yep, behind you. you gotta go through that door. <laughs> Y'all agree. It's, it is what it is. Check it out. But you gotta go in it. You gotta go in. Here, go over here this way. <laughs> it's separated. No, actually, it's, wait, go, sorry, go in this one. This is way bigger over here. <laughs> this one? Yep. Bro, this is luxury. Y'all ever oh. seen a porter potty like this? Man, this shit's nice. Damn. It's got you, got, walls. you got three of them? It's got crown molding. Crown molding and stuff? <sighs> yeah, a little spoiled. A little spoiled. Put a temporary restroom here. 
underneath. I should have done this like for the last like three, bro. Like the two years I was building the place, you know? Yeah, I know. That would have been smart. Before? The shack and the storage. Yeah. <laughs> Luxury porter body. Done. Living in a crowded dream Searching for the quiet that you need to breathe Gave up on your sanity to hide behind your shadow While you tried to take the sun down Hearts will never change to gold Out there thinking that you're in the world alone No one ever told you that you'll have to fight for something Or you'll never learn to balance <laughs> That's all we got. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to be shredded. <laughs> Is that a vacuum or what? <laughs> That's when almost have, right. Like, Shakira? <laughs> <laughs> this shit hurts. Oh my god. Weirdest thing just freaking happened, guys. Like the weirdest thing. Okay. Let me park and I'll tell the story here. We pull up, there's an open road, okay? I'm like, launch. I have a launch, little launch button on the truck right here, right? This thing's got 702 horsepower, the TRX, right? So, sick little launch, roll the windows down, and then went back to normal speed, chilling, you know, that's fun, right? Talking one. I put my, my hand out the, the fucking window, and literally, this, uh, the B, there, a bee came, like, like, my hand's out, a bee lands 40 miles an hour right on my, like, look. You see this shit? The stinger went right in there. Like, just, it's just like, just chilling. B, boom. And my, oh my God. I was like, what the fuck just hit my hand? And it was like in there. So, I, and then he was on my, on my dick. And he was alive. And I was like, oh shit. And I go, go. <laughs> Killed it. <laughs> but yo, what the, what the fuck? Yeah. That's that great. That hurts. Redmond's like, I forgot how much bee things hurt. You have to, is there, you don't have to take anything out, right? Like bees? No, nah, fuck you. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it was staying there. Wow, that, that went straight in though. That's what are the, are the odds of that? The odds of that. Oh my fuck! Some final destination. <laughs> Ooh, wow. It's like this shit burns, man. It's like burning everywhere in there. Well, my throat closes up, bro. I don't have an epipen, so you know. <laughs> if there's one comment, why'd you cure it? <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, you know what? I'm not gonna even say it. I'm just gonna show y'all. We got something real cool. We're like 30 minutes away from the house, which for me to leave and go 30 minutes somewhere on a work day, it's a Friday, it doesn't happen. So this has to be pretty special. buy when the fitness catcher went out of business i go go poach go, try, go try to find some, something yeah. yeah that's smart yeah. Um, but we would be the guys when they would come in to do the refresh we'd come in pull the old equipment out put the new stuff damn. in and then i can throw weights on it if you want but that's oh, i can feel damn fucking selling me real quick that feels nice and it's it's something that a cable can't give you right like i, I can never replicate this movement on a cable or a dumbbell or anything The showroom. Like, and you need the show one, but then like, this is like the dam. Oh yeah, you know the, what I mean. This is what it'll be. That's yeah. that's why we're gonna line it up. So literally, and, and actually all, be able to lift it. Right? Yes, exactly. That's so so smart. we have the demo rooms over there, the show rooms over there, and then people can come over here and lift, throw shit around, do whatever they want. Damn. Um, so it that that's coming. That's, that's coming. Sick. Yeah. God damn, I'm about to take down Outland over here. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna have to. It's built for that. And then know? if you do that thing, you can do mirrors all the way down here and on the other side. So you guys want to move in is what you're telling me. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I just love designing layouts, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mirror, mirror, fucking, oh, it's so, big banners this way, sign in the back center, boom. 
yep. black wool bill. And oh man, yeah, you're getting too excited now, bro. This is so fun. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, we have some Bravo units over there that are taken apart too, right up against the wall. I really need to smith, like we just are, are broken. It's like, it's kind of like too far gone. Okay. If you if, if you could just show me pictures of this when you came in the other, like the first time, I would have come right over. <laughs> Damn. Got it. Shout out to Panada. They're uh, an Italian fitness equipment brand that is really coming into the US and making the presence known. Uh, and they wanted us to you know, check out a few pieces that they think would be great for Alfland. But you can genuinely see like how excited I was the entire time. How much passion there was, how much, just, I, was, I was like lit up, like literally like a kid in the candy store, just like talking about equipment and, and talking about like, you know, all of the accumulated pieces that I've, you know, found and purchased over the last, what is it, like seven, eight years? Literally, I had a gym before I had Alphalete. That's like how long I've been, you know, pursuing, the, you know, building this facility. It's going to be the best facility on paper because we're going to have everything you need. That we're going to have the best machines. We're going to have like this, this, and this. And like, I've always just been so obsessed with it. And it's, uh, it, it, I think today just really, really made me realize it. And it was a good reminder that I've known what I wanted to do since I was literally 15 years old. When I signed up for my group training classes after high school, I knew that I wanted to own a facility, a gym. And I wanted to have, you know, groups of classes come and train. And I wanted to be like, in that environment. So that's where I fell in love with fitness. That's where I got hooked. I caught the bug. And from there, my entire life started slowly changing. I never like thought that I would be a clothing designer. Like a, I, I never had any intention of doing that. My intention was always to train people and help people change their lives through fitness, right? Health and fitness. You have to have that underlying, like I know where that passion is. That's where my excitement comes from, building that facility and being able to, on an everyday basis when I'm at my office on the second floor in Alfley, like looking down, looking over, I get to see everybody coming in the facility. I get to look out the window and see every, this community like utilizing the facility. And, and just like, it, it's crazy how successful that, and, and I consider, I'm referring to successful as just like how the feedback has been about the place, right? And the, just what it's kind of like, the, the energy it's giving off, the, the people that it's drawing in, the, the new friendships it's like forming, the new, it's just a place that, it's literally the dream place that I wish I had when I was 19. I'm building the place I wish I had when I was 19. It's the best way to kind of put it. But um, yeah, it's just, this shit's so exciting to me, man. And I think that it's impossible to limit someone or something that is just so dead set on like, like I don't know I just we're gonna build the we're gonna continue building and building and building and improving 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 and I have no doubt that's that, that, that's ever gonna stop or like slow down um, just because like literally I can't wait to get back home and just go and you know spend the hours digging through all that the, the used equipment. Panada had a second warehouse right next door to their uh, the main one, and I was just literally a kid in the candy store. So my overall message here, guys, is just going to be: when you have a pat, like a burning desire to do something, and you, you're like literally you're giddy and you're you're just all over the place, and you can't keep your thoughts together, you're like, that's a really really clear sign that you're in the field or you're doing something you know that you should probably try to hold on to and try to grow in and try to become an expert in because if you get really really good at whatever that is it's going to open up doors to you know create a life and create a you know create a job create an income create stability um, from so that's my biggest piece of advice um, i know where my heart is it ain't going nowhere with Alfie, but it will always deeply, truly belong to the gym. That's where the passion is. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you can find your passion. And um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. We'll see you in the next one.